This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. It may be an oldie, but it's still a goodie on the 3DS. It's The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time 3D. Totally Rad Smack dab in the middle of the summer lull of new releases, which is a perfect opportunity for us to check in with some games that have come out a few weeks ago that really shouldn't be missed. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. Now, Ocarina of Time is undeniably one of the classics of video game history. It's uh, usually ranked as either the top or near the top in all of the Legend of Zelda games. And uh, it's been remade now for the 3DS, brought into 3D, and uh, all of the controls from the N64 have been translated to the handheld console. And today we're going to talk about it. Of course, you notice we're still without Alex, but we've got a great replacement for him today. Billy Berghammer is here. He is a freelance video game journalist and a veritable Nintendo expert. Some would say a junkie, actually. <laughs> the uh, founder of Planet GameCube. Yes. Uh, and a Nintendo fanboy from way back. Absolutely. So Ocarina of Time, of course, Link's got the ocarina, he can play magic songs. That's basically the big, big uh, uh, well, that was the gimmick big, of yeah, this one. That was the gimmick of this one. Um, and they've done a really good job with translating it over to the 3DS. Uh, Grezzo was the team that, that actually did it along with uh, Nintendo uh, in Japan. And the game turned out fantastic. Um, you know, a lot of people have complained about uh, using the 3D slider a lot and not turning it up all the way. I kept mine up pretty much two-thirds almost full the entire time while I played it. I thought the 3D effect looked absolutely gorgeous in, you know, Kokiri Forest and uh, even in Zora's Domain when you're diving off the, the waterfall. That, that effect is just, it's amazing. Yeah, I love the wispy things in Kokiri Forest. It really... It's beautiful. Yeah. It's really good, and they they upresed it really well. It, you know, you're not having the the foggy shading of of a N64 game. It looks really crisp. Looks gorgeous, um, and I think the controls, you know, were adapted very well to the 3DS. So, you obviously a fan of this game from its original incarnation. Yes. Do you do you think that gamers new to this game, younger people who maybe didn't play it, or even people who just missed it the first time around? Do you think this will feel like a modern video game? It, it, it belongs in kind of a new release mentality, or do you think it'll feel like an old? Absolutely. It, yeah. It, it, I think it. Um, you know, even though it is an older game, everything else, everything feels. It's it's a Zelda game. I mean, Zelda games have exploring dungeons. Use some of the gadgets. I mean, it it's all part of that that formula that works really well. Yeah. Dan, I know you played this game back in the day as well. Yeah, it's been a few years. Been, it, been just a few. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, this is this is my experience of playing this game. This this will set the date and time. I was in high school. That doesn't mean anything to you, but it means we would something. we would leave. I understand I the words. Leaving high school early. Um, it we means had, you're younger than me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> leaving high school early, and my friend and I would put in Ocarina of Time, and every time we hit a level. Um, or a, a sequence that was incredibly frustrating, we had no answer to it because there was no game facts or whatever, we would pop in Goldeneye and kill each other in Goldeneye for a little bit and then hop back in Ocarina of Time. Nice. I remember finishing the game in one 12-hour session. It was a sleepover with my Whoa. nephew. I, I sort of, Because I never had an N64, so I only played this game with other people. Um, which I, I think that. is more fun. I never had an N64 either. I played this game emulated on my PC. Oh, wow. Haxer. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, I played this game at e Electronics Boutique <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I finished that the game. That back. Yeah. But, um, and I, I must say, playing it again on the 3DS was a lot of fun. It, be it reminded me of what it felt like to play the game originally, which was for the first time really feeling a sweeping adventure. The way that you had imagined what the original Zelda was, um, that, that that top down view really couldn't get, get across. The game, when you're like leaving the forest for the first time and have to travel to the cat and it's a whole open field, 
It's like you really feel the expanse for the first time. And then because of the 3D, you mean? Not, no, I'm not even just because of the 3D. I'm just recalling playing this game. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And then also that moment where you're sneaking around guards, and I feel like that may have been the first time I ever really encountered stealth. I'm talking about in the castle, you have to sneak around yeah. the guards and in the stealth. moat. Stealth. You know? Yeah. It. it was like that was like wow. I'm really I really felt like an adventurer for the first time. Um, I mean, then now I, I just it brought all those feelings back, and I feel like this is where it kind of started for me. Um, uh, th- I, let me just hit on that really yeah. quick because I'm curious if there's more to it than just nostalgia, and that's kind of what I was asking you as well. Is like, yes, we all have a nostalgic feeling for this game, this particular game, because it's, I think it was the culmination of all the things that Zelda promised even back in its old 8-bit days. Yeah. But is there more to it than just nostalgia? I is think it- it's pretty solid, and it, and it feels a lot like um, I was thinking of Shadow of the Colossus while playing. Like, it really does have its links in those games. Of course, those games have better graphics, and we've come so far from them, but there's, it's such a solid, solidly made game that I think even if you were picking up today for the first time, it still would do its trick. I mean, the pacing's a little low, but I think it still would work. The 3D, this is the first time I've ever used the 3DS for an extended period of time. I was getting a headache. Um, I did love how it looked, though when you, because of that slider, when you can turn it off, you sometimes you feel like, oh, I st- it still does feel like 3D, even though it's not 3D. You know what I mean? Like it- it's funny. Like if we had that in movies, we might not be having so many 3D movies. When people really see the like, that's all it does. It- you-, you realize that you still are immersed. Because I really loved it when you would crawl through like logs or whatever, and you yeah. had that real strong 3D. But when you turn it off, that you- there still is that three-dimensional effect happening. Um, I mean, not technically, but like you really feel like you are crawling inside and. The game is in three dimensions. It's not a 2D game. It is a 3D game, regardless of the 3DS. Mm. So I, I went from like loving it, um, and, and as you said, those particles coming in the foreground, that, that, those are very cool. It's like cool for a second, but an extended period of time, which this it takes to play this game. It's a long game. I, it it kind of yeah. got to me. I don't know, what did you, were you loving the 3D here? I or? was loving the 3D. Yeah. I, I thought it really, just adding depth to all the scenes uh, really added a lot. Now, I had some issue. It's funny because I defended 3DS when it first came out of like all the people who were like, well, you have to have it at the exact right angle. It's like, I haven't really ever had that problem. But the fact that they ch- put the, I guess, what used to be the Z trigger onto your L- mm-hmm. L1. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you have, to, I mean, the way the battle system works is you want to lock on and you have to hold that down when you're fighting. I found myself like jarring the game a lot when I would hold down the. Yeah. And it would mess up my, and I'd be like, blah, everything's wrong. Yeah. You know, and, I, and so when a big fight would happen, I'd, I'd quickly slide all the 3D off huh. and do my fight and then go back to just exploring the world in 3D because any jarring that I was doing, and the L1 and R1 with, with adult human hands, <laughs> it's not super comfortable. It's not, you don't, not like the well, old you have Z-trigger. ginormous hands. So. Uh, well, you know. Um, <laughs> but you know what they say about that. Yeah, it's difficult to play 3DS games. <laughs> um, and there's a couple of other really interesting concessions, right? Now we have a second screen uh, that is touch screen, and I love the sort of big thumb-friendly pads to quickly go to different menu items, you know? That's great, but I felt like the map was kind of useless. Down there. The map really didn't show you too much until you got into a dungeon and then you could flip between the different levels of the map. Right. But even if you're, like, say you're in Hyrule Field, which is an expansive area, it doesn't really tell you where you are. Exactly. It's like, I want that you are here button, you know? Like, yeah, and it's, it's displaying it the whole time. Why not give me that information? If I push map, it shows me a, a map on the top screen. It just felt like it didn't really help me any, and you have it down there the entire time. Um, and how did you guys feel about aiming, for example, like your uh, slingshot or arrows or something with the uh, motion control with the gyroscope. See, I didn't, you know, you can do this and all that sort of thing, but you kind of look like an ass doing that and it doesn't really work well. And especially just like you were saying, if you shift the screen, uh, you lose the 3D effect. Right. Um, what I would do is if I was aiming, you know, the slingshot or the bow and, you know, just using the, whatever, the slide pad, I would to do pinpoint things, I would just move it up just a little bit, just a hair, like, and it, mm-hmm. it worked great. That that actually worked great, but I'm not gonna do this. That's I just... was I was similar to Billy in that, yeah, because because what really the the, uh, the bummer for me with the 3D, um, the 3DS to have the 3D was in moments like that where you'd have to move it. You can't move it around. You your whole bot. You have to like pick right. your like fir- lock your elbows and like 
Move everywhere your elbows move, to, you know? But, and what it just is, just like Link is you doing. Can't, you can't, yeah, right. just, and you real. can't just kick it with your, with your DS. You can't just like hang out and play or whatever. If you want to have 3D for this game in particular, those viewing angles are very important. And you really do have to like, okay, now I, oh, now the 3D looks cool. You know, you have to like find your position and not leave that. You can't like go in the toilet, which I, I didn't, I borrowed your 3 ds I never, I wouldn't do that. No. no. Um, <laughs> Tissues! Uh, I need tissues! But anyway, so, yeah, not a perfect 3DS uh, experience for me. But Again, love this game. It's a classic. It does feel very contemporary to me. I felt like, oh, man, this feels like a new adventure, even though I kept getting to things like, I remember that. And they do some interesting concessions, like there's a, a new hint system that's built into the game where you find these rocks that you can crawl I like into. That. I really like that. And it will like show that. you, like, little clips almost, little movies of... Yeah, and if you watch, uh, if you read the Iwata Asks article, they talk about how they cut those videos so they don't spoil anything. Because you know, if you if you want a little hint but not a you know yeah. fact ah. spoiler, like it's it's really well done. They're really nice. I agree with that. My, my biggest complaint with the entire game is is in translating it to a portable experience. Mm -hmm. I feel like they really had to change the save system, and they didn't. Mm. I wanted to be able to save and pick up right where I left off on a portable system, because there's going to be a time where I'm like, oh, i got to get off on this bus stop, save, and you know? And I know you can just put it to sleep and right. stuff, but saving and then starting back at my home base or, you know, like, right. that's a conceit of the old console system, and it doesn't work well for handhelds. It just makes me feel like, oh, now i got to spend the, the five minutes I was going to play this while I was going to the bathroom. Not that anybody ever did. I mean, but, although it is your own, so feel free to do whatever you want with it. <laughs> the five minutes I'm going to play this is basically just getting back to where I was right. when I left off. That's annoying. And traversing that entire field, even yeah. if you're on yeah. Epona, it takes a while to get there. Exactly. Um, yeah. I wish they would have added more stuff. Like, well, they have the master. They have the master quest, quest but yeah. that's that was on the GameCube disc actually. Yeah. So that's and you can't start. If say you're a seasoned veteran, you can't just start from the master quest. You have to play through the entire game, and then. Then you can select the master quest, mm -hmm. but they didn't. They added a boss battle mode, which is hard to find. You have to go to your bed in your house. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you found that or not. Um, but that's basically it. There's one new orchestrated track at the end in the credits. Spoiler, uh, but it's. I just wanted more. I wanted maybe an extra dungeon or mm -hmm. something. You know, for the people that have played all the way through it once, give them a little extra. Yeah, but if you haven't played this one, definitely don't miss it. And if you have a 3DS, I think. Right now, it's the best 3DS game. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, this is what we do, a little uh, fist bump at the end. All right, everybody, be sure to stick around for this day in rad history. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show. In this episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben addresses the lazy gamers out there and builds a what? disc changer for his, PlayStation, or for his Xbox 360 so you can select between games from the comfort of your couch. Wow. Lazy gamer, that sounds like a redundant. First off, that's an amazing device that I want in my face right now because yeah. I hate having to get up, open up the thing, open the cabinet. Uh, so stay tuned at element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win this amazing Xbox disc changer he builds, which I, by the way, am totally entering. <laughs> uh, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Show to check out episodes and unique content. Thank you very much. Keep watching. I'd, seriously, I'm going to enter to win that because that would really change my life. Yeah. <laughs> Or you can work. just build it. <laughs> yeah, that's an option. Yeah, watch the episode and build it. <laughs> oh, I could try that. Hey, yeah. guys. We're going to be at Comic-Con. I know. Crazy, right? Comic-Con. Like, soonish. I hope that people watching are going to also be there. I hope that as well, because if they are, and Friday night, they can come and see us live on our Comic-Con panel. Woo! Very fun show this year, folks. Yeah. Very fun show. Be there. Don't miss tomorrow for our review of the board game Cash and Guns. Hello, everybody. Today is July 11th, and on this day in 1985, I don't even want to say in rad history, <laughs> uh, many, many, many people's hearts were broken when Coke decided to change the formula of Coca-Cola to New Coke. Now, Which, let me ask way, you this. There's a, a bad it, has a ba it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Literally, that's why they but, had to change it. Do you remember? Yes. I don't. Oh, I remember. I remember the I, didn't, I never. I don't. I don't think I've ever. Anyways, so. Right. You know, oh no. I, I don't remember. Think I ever even tasted. Oh, it. I definitely tasted it because I was a big Coke fan. 
I just had it like, I mean, bare, this is not even my nose. Uh, <laughs> it's horrible. But I, was, I would drink Coke all the time. And I remember when they changed it, I was like, oh my God, it's gonna taste so much better. And it was horrible. And there was, I mean, it was a big window of time before a Coca-Cola Classic. Like the reason why the bottle looks like and says Coca-Cola Classic is because they still remember 1985. <laughs> I, I would love to try some new Coke. Oh, it is, re it's, it's, mm. Really? Oh but, yeah, it's bad. Buy it off of eBay, I'm sure it well, ages. Well, let me, let me take a, this way. Do you have a favorite soda? I really don't drink sodas too much anymore, but, but yeah, do, I, I, guess, I guess soda. Coke would be my favorite. Okay, yeah. do you know like or when you go beer. out and get or like a, grape. okay, well let's say it's Coke, just for fun. <laughs> do you well, know when you go out good. and you get a cola that's not Coke? Yeah. And it's like, this yeah. doesn't or, taste yeah. good. It's like, bleh. That's what new Coke tasted like. And so then, the fact that you never would be able to have Coke again. Anyway, I sent that in. Thanks, Alex Albright, for sending that in. Coke. <laughs>